Hi guys, it's Mr. Pharma. The world is evolving faster than ever. There are new diseases and disorders and new drug discoveries equally are getting in higher demand. Due to the rise of new drug discoveries, there is always a huge demand for harmonizing the medicinal products. In order to control and maintain the standards for quality, safety and efficacy of each medicinal product. Let's see today the organization that takes the responsibility to harmonize the medicinal products, the ICH. The ICH stands for International Council for Harmonization of Technical Requirements for Pharmaceuticals for Human Use. Let's just call that simply as the ICH. Today we shall see what, who, when and why it was formed, see its organization structure, their work products and more importantly the ICH guidelines. I will be trying to give the summarized view of ICH guidelines in 2020 as the ICH and their guidelines are getting updated every year which will be very helpful for the aspiring students and pharma professionals. So let's move on. Hey guys, welcome to our channel, Pharma Portal, the pharma you need to know, share and grow. So let's see what are the five questions that we need to know about ICH. ICH is an international non-profit organization which aims to deliver harmonized guidelines for global pharmaceutical development. So when was ICH initially founded? It was founded in April 1990. And why is ICH founded? To harmonize the technical requirements in and to ensure quality, safety and quality of medicines and to minimize the use of animal testing and prevent the duplication of clinical trials and etc. Where is ICH? Formed. So ICH's birthplace is in Brussels, Belgium and the current ICH secretariat is located in Geneva in Switzerland. So who are the founding members of ICH? The founding members of ICH are Europe, United States and Japan. So as we know the overview of ICH role and other details, let's now see the organization structure of ICH. The organization structure can be broken down as the organization chart, the list of members and the observers. The members and the observers are listed here and they are self-explanatory. So let's see the organization chart and its members. Auditors are the primary role players. They perform the audits on the financial settlement for the year who are appointed for two years and may be reappointed. So assembly contains the minutes of meeting that are published on the website for transparency for the stakeholders. The ICH working groups, face-to-face -face meetings and summary reports and the teleconference are published on the ICH website which are similar to the assemblies meetings. Medra management committee deals with the medical terminologies for sharing regulatory information. The ICH secretary is responsible for day to day management of ICH activity. The coordinators ensure the proper distribution of the ICH documents. And finally, the ICH working group. They are established, the uh, they are established for the technical topics selected for harmonization and there are different types of uh, ICH groups. One being the EWG, the expert working groups, who are the subject matter experts. And the second one being the implementation working group, who deal with the question and answers. And the third being the informal working group, who deal with finalizing the concept papers. And finally, the discussion group, who discuss with the specific scientific views. The ICH process for guideline development involves the following steps. Step 1, to prepare the conscious draft of the technical document based on the objectives set out in the concept paper. The second step is the EWG confirmation of the concepts of the technical document and is adopted as a draft guideline by the regulatory members. Step 3 occurs as three stages, first as the consultation, second as the discussion and third as the finalization process. Step 4 involves adoption of an ICH harmonized guideline. Step 5, the final step of the process that is the regulatory implementation. So now let's see the ICH work products. The number one is the ICH harmonization activities like process harmonization, etc. Two is managing the guidelines, which deals about A to Z of the guidelines. Third is the ICH standards management, such as MEDRA, CTD, etc. Finally, works on reflection and consideration documents, etc. Let's get into the major subject, the ICH guidelines. The ICH guidelines is classified into quality, safety, efficacy, and multidisciplinary guidelines. The quality guidelines in turn is classified into 14 separate guidelines and discuss about the pharmaceutical quality. And whereas the safety guideline is classified into 12 separate guidelines and they discuss about the potential risks like carcinogenicity. The efficacy guidelines is classified from uh, E1 to E20 and they discuss about the 
design, conduct, safety and reporting of clinical trials. And finally, the multidisciplinary guidelines, they talk about the disc topics that are unique and that doesn't cover from quality, safety and efficacy categories. So now let's discuss about the quality guidelines. Q1 is the stability guidelines that deals with the stability testing of new drug substance and drug products. Second one is the analytical validation which covers the validation of analytical procedures. And third is the impurities which discuss about the impurities in drug substance and drug products. Fourth one being the pharmacopoeia which deals with the harmonization of pharmacopoeias. Fifth one being the quality of biotechnical products which covers the viral safety evaluation of biotech products and its quality. Sixth one being the specification which guides the test procedures and acceptance for the new drug substance and drug products. Seventh one being the good manufacturing practices which provides the guidance for regarding GMP. Eighth one being the pharmaceutical development which is intended to provide the guidance for the contents in section 3 to P2 pharmaceutical development. Ninth one being the quality risk management which provides the principles for the quality risk management assessment. Q10 discuss about the guidance on the development and manufacturing and distribution of the products and life cycle management. Q11 being the development and manufacture of drug substance which address the development and manufacture of the DS. Q12 the life cycle management provides the framework to the product life cycle. Q13 is the continuous manufacturing of drug substance and drug product which guides the development and implementation to integrate the continuous manufacture of the products. Q14 the analytical procedure development which is proposed to harness the scientific approaches of the analytical procedure development. So let's move on for safety guidelines. S1 discuss about the carcinogenicity studies for new drugs and testings and S2 discuss about genotoxicity testings and studies and S3 discusses about toxicokinetics and pharmacokinetics testings and strategies and S4 discusses about toxicity testing. S5 discusses about reproductive toxicology and S6 discusses about biotechnological products that covers preclinical safety requirements and S7 discusses about pharmacological studies and S8 discusses about immunological studies and S9 discusses about non-clinical evaluation of anti-cancer pharmaceuticals. S10 discusses about photo stability evaluation which discusses about the standards for photo safety and S11 discusses about non-clinical pediatric safety which provides the direction of non-clinical safety studies in pediatric development programs and S12 finally discusses about non-clinical biodistribution consideration for gene therapy products. So let's see about the efficacy guidelines. The E1 guidelines states about the clinical safety of drugs in long-term treatment and the E2 guidelines states about the pharmacovigilance and its key aspects of clinical safety reporting. E3 guidelines discuss about the clinical study reports and its clinical study report formats. So E4 guideline discuss about the dose response studies and its relationship among drug drug concentration etc. And E5 discuss about the ethnic factors that is related with culture and that could affect the results of clinical studies. So the E6 guideline discuss about the good clinical practice and its GCP principles. And so the E7 guideline discuss about the clinical trials in geriatric population and E8 guideline discuss about the general considerations for clinical trials and E9 guideline discuss about the statistical principles for clinical trials. So the E10 guideline discusses about the choice of control group in the clinical trials. The E11 guideline states about clinical trials in pediatric population and E12 guideline states about clinical evaluation by therapeutic category. E30 is not in the picture right now and it is discussing about regulatory compliance. So E14 discusses about the clinical evaluation of QT which is concerned about the design, conduct, analysis and interpretation of clinical studies. E15 discusses about the definition of pharmacogenics and pharmacogenetics. E16 discusses about the qualification of genomic biomarkers and E17 discusses about the multi-regional clinical trials and E18 discusses about the genomic sampling and management of genomic data and E19 discusses about the safety data collection and finally the E20 discusses about the adaptive clinical trials which discusses about the design, conduct, analysis and interpretation of adaptive clinical trials. The next important category of guideline is the multidisciplinary guide. M1 discusses about the medical dictionary for regulatory activities and terminologies and the M2 discusses about the electronic standards. M3 discusses about the non-clinical safety studies and M4 the very important the common technical document. It recommends to assemble all the quality, safety and efficacy information in a common format. So the M5 discusses about the data elements and standards for the drug and dictionaries. M6 discusses about the gene therapy and M7 discusses about the mutagenic impurity 
securities and m8 discusses about the electronic common technical document it discusses about the key aspects of technical review and impact assessment of issues arising from the use of ICH m4 CTD guide m9 discusses about the biopharmaceutical classification systems of bio waivers and m10 discusses about the bioanalytical method validation m11 discusses about the clinical electronic structured harmonized protocol and m12 discusses about the drug interaction studies finally the multidisciplinary guideline which is m13 discusses about the bioequivalence for immediate release solid oral dosage forms so let's now see the values and benefits of ICH. ICH helps in reducing the development times and resources. ICH helps easier new drug launches. ICH also helps to have the recognized global standard. In short, ICH helps in bringing life-saving treatments to patients in a faster rate and helps the pharma companies to develop standard medicinal drug products. Thanks for watching the video guys. Hope you like this video. Motivate us more by hitting the like button, sharing this video to friends and family. More importantly, subscribe and hit the bell icon for our regular video updates. Bye. See you soon in the next amazing topic. This is Mr. Pharma signing off.